Hi guys, good afternoon, welcome to our live video from Rea Atenea. We have Camille here as well and Ian as well is on board. Good morning. Um, <laughs> Ian is busy as always, he's working, he can't stop. First of all we would like to thank you for uh, the last few view, new views that you put up and the comments that we got. We're really happy. Our subscribers are coming up as well, so it's good. And today, Camille is going to ask us some information, so you guys know more about us and the situation we're having and all the stuff that we still have to do. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Because I think the story is very interesting, but not many people know what exactly is going to happen. So this is what we try to get today out of the video. So let's see if anybody joins and see the journey. We still have two. Uh, Melanie is online, and the other guy who's the other guy. I can't see the names, but <laughs> definitely Welcome. someone you know. <laughs> yes. So, so maybe we start with the, the whole story, like the, the moment you you purchased the, the boat. When was it? Was yes, it in Malta? It, or? No, we purchased the boat in Spain. We went to see another boat. Um, but we didn't end up buying that one and then a friend of mine told us about this one which was out of our budget but we went to look for it anyway because it was a younger so it's a very famous uh, brand of boats and we were lucky because the guy that was looking after it he put the boat up in the yard because they were doing some maintenance so yeah. we, we, we had the chance to look at it but when we looked at the boat from the outside, we didn't see any damage, nothing. We only knew about this damage in the cockpit, we knew about it. And inside we couldn't see the hull because the hull was built up that all the wood was fitted that you cannot take it out to, to inspect, which is bad. Yes. But obviously if you're buying a boat, you cannot go and break the, <laughs> the bedroom or something. Go oh, I want to look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we asked for a survey, so we got the ultrasonic guy from Spain, which played us over because he gave us a bad report, but because we weren't there to, to visually see the report, because we had to go back to Malta. To, so we bought the boat anyway, and we did the trip, and then when, when we came here, we found the real damage. So, but we're still happy to have the boat, even if it was a big challenge for us, big project, but we're still um, happy that we have the boat. Yeah, but obviously it's the huge risk, because when you take the boat, you only test a little bit. Yes, and when, when, when you go buy a boat, I, I, my advice is that you always take your surveyor, your personal yeah. surveyor, your personal surveyor and not trust anybody else yeah. you that's the biggest um, but like i tell you and he tell me as well if, if we took our surveyor we don't have a boat we're probably we're still looking for a boat mm. and we fall in love with the boat immediately and so um, was it, for me it's i love this i knew these boats already and it was like a dream you know yes and we, I'm, I'm super happy because now we know what we have, we're doing what we love. Yes, but Ganga said And maybe even if we bought a boat, I always told that in, I said, if we buy a boat, we're still going to modify it. You want to sit in the middle? We're still, so go we're still going to modify it to our needs. Yes. Because for what we want to do, we want a boat that we, you're going to live on it. So you want something that you're comfortable, that you have what you want, which in our case we we go. That's why we're having that platform we have at the, the back. Water line. You know, we have the it's water line, the length. Sixty foot, mm -hmm. fifty nine under the water, so it gives you speed when you're motoring or sailing, especially yeah. when sailing. You can reach those nine, ten knots easily. You know. And we have space so for our. We, we all have friends, you know, and the boat is space. It's spacious, you know. Yeah. You can have friends come here, join you. you, you're not cramped. Some 60 foot there, you, you go inside, to three people, 
you start feeling there in the salon we, we can sit six people easy you used to have your space it's the, for, for to give you an idea the water tank is 3000 liters mm. and the diesel tank is over 3500 liters for a 60 footer this is not normal on a sailing boat you're not going to find mm. this capacity of water and fuel you know so it gives it also a, a, a long range you can have a, a nice water maker, space for generator, yeah. you can make your own water, so it's, it's good You can for, go for isolate ocean for... Ocean going, you know? I mean, the, the, the fuel we have, we can cross the Atlantic. No no other 60 foot I can cross the Atlantic on, on engine okay. without taking fuel, you know? And even like, for example, what happened now? We have to have a crossing with no wind. Then it's got a motor in the air, which is Emma, which is impossible. Or, 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 you never know. If, if four bids, you lose the mast. You you have yeah. you've got a big range yeah. that you can still go. So it's good, no? If we go diesel, if we go diesel, we don't know. Either. And did you ever see like if you pass the other boat that they they losing the mast? And they like with the mask on the side or something? Some boats, yes, it happens. It happens. So it happened before. Oh. Make a mistake. Uh, if you be, if, like I told you before, if you make a mistake, if you're in bed with there, you have all the leak, and you make a mistake, some people continue on the on the sails. Easy when you when it's bad weather, you have to to reef to take a reef. You have to make the sm sails smaller, and then eventually even you have to close them down like we had to do on the voyage over here. We had to close all the mainsail, all the mizzen, mm -hmm. and we were just using a part of, of the small Genoa. And that was still, at 65 knots, that was still struggling to keep up. And yeah, at the end, at the end we closed it. Just, it. just a small, just a small piece. Just to keep the boat stand. We, we had to keep, a, uh, we, had, we didn't have a storm jib, so we had to use what we have. And we had to because if you, as soon as you put the, the sails in and you try to motor in those conditions, man, it's impossible. And the how long it took to come from the Spain to, to motor? Like crazy. It took us all together six days, but we spent two days in uh, in Sardinia waiting for weather. We left on Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, we arrived New Year's Eve. We arrived New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve. Okay. one week exactly. And we stopped two days in Sardinia. Luckily we the arrived before the night. We two and, nights we um, stopped because we arrived in the evening in the about evening. five o'clock. We spent the whole day there, a night, and, and then, and then we, we left, left in the morning. In the morning. Next and day. we followed the storm. Mm. Which it, it was still then. It was relaxed then from from Sardinia to Malta. You know, we didn't from have much from Gandia to to Sardinia was. Yeah, hardcore, the first you know, first was leg was hardcore because we, we didn't have an autopilot. The so boat had nothing work. You know, where you had to like steer all the time between. We were four people, but me and him and Manji were were doing all the steering because Pete was new to it, you know, and mm. didn't um, have the experience. It was, a, it was an adventure. It was a crazy. It was adventure. a great. So the boat, I mean, the, the guys who uh, here safe. We were super. We were lucky as well because the guys we had on board, nobody was seasick. Mm. Sometimes I had the experience before. I have a crew with me, but half of the crew is seasick. So you end up alone. Yeah. Mm. That's very important when, when you are doing a voyage. If you have people that are that can get seasick and you know that they are going to be out of action, you have to have somebody extra. Mm. Because otherwise you end up alone. Fair enough. You know? Yes. Um, but now that the idea is maybe end of October, it goes to the water. No, that's the plan. We still, we've got that piece at the back that we found last um, to fit. After that one, we will start preparing the boat for, for the final. But before we close that one, we cannot... We prepare. were ready. We were ready to go on just that small one that you showed yesterday. Yeah. They were leaving that one open for making us easy to come in and out, not mm. coming from the leather all the time. Um, and then we were cleaning here at the back to get everything ready for the paint and we start finding the rust I kept going in if you see rust keep going in and, and then we found we cleaned the maybe you can show them later on in the video we cleaned the, 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 the cement that there was there poor there and we found that the, um, there is a shaft the shaft goes inside the tube 
the shaft that turns the propeller, yeah. it's inside a tube with two seals and full of oil. Mm -hmm. And then there's a reservoir in the engine room that this takes gear oil 80, 90, and there is um, a feed with a 12 millimeter pipe that goes one in front of the, of the tube and one goes at the very stern of the tube. So it keeps the pipe always full with oil. Mm. And, and the, the shaft is standing in this oil and the bearings are always lubricated and leaving the water, this is leave the water outside, you know. Mm. A very good system, old system. But we found out, kept digging, that this pipe going to the back was finished. Mm. Was broken. Completely broken pieces. It, it didn't rust because it, it's not of steel. It's 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 copper. Of copper but it's been the water. There was water coming in, and mix of water, oil, and the cement, and it has corroded completely, and it's been eaten. So but because the boat is like that old, we were lucky again, because if we didn't see find this one, we had put because we have a new shaft in stainless steel, new bearings, new seals, everything new, ready to go in. Yeah. And um, if we try to rush. We would have put them in, we would start putting the oil in the engine room, and the oil would never fill because it's going in outside, you know, over mm. here. So we would start looking for this problem, have to take And we found out again. because we were, we were putting oil, water in the tube to clean it. And water kept coming up. It kept coming up. You and know, uh, so we said we have a problem here. Yeah? How, how come here, is water know? coming up? At first we thought that the tube itself was broken. But luckily it wasn't. It was only the pipe. The pipe that feeds the oil. Because the tube, the, the tube. thickness of the mm. tube is 20 millimeter. It's like a steam pipe, you know, you know steam pipe, and then the, the thickness shaft of the turns inside this tube in oil. So this put us too, too easy, two, two, three months behind this. It's a big job, as you can mm. see, too big. Uh, obviously, we were and supposed to go in the water in August. How they are bent, the so shape, in October, it's exactly yeah. on the stand, and, and we found that there's like a piece of bulkhead the um, was missing as it's well. It's missing, so we are making it like it was, this 10 millimeter um, plate, steel plate. So that's the plan, and you know, hopefully end of October, we'll go back and do water, and then we'll continue on the water. But as soon as the boat is in the water, we'll be very happy, you know, because this will come off. We know we know that at least we have the hull now it's safe yes. and we can start the work on, on here on the cockpit area. We in the meantime we'll take the masts off and do the the inspection on the rigging to make new rigging and we'll we'll inspect the masts. Hopefully we won't find a lot of damage. There is some corrosion. That For we'll sure, look, you see where there's we'll stainless steel? Those where the spreaders are, yeah. there's stainless steel brackets. Mm -hmm. They are attached directly to the aluminium. Mm -hmm. They didn't uh, put I any don't believe there's even a gasket or something. They should be, when you mix materials, you have to put um, special coating or um, a, a gasket that no, they don't touch. No, we're not you know? going to have no stainless steel. We'll, we'll use aluminium. Use aluminium. So we will take everything off. It's gonna have it. This is a good mast. I hope it's still in, the, in, in a good shape because it's old. The boat is 50 years old, and I believe the mast is 50 years old as well. I'm not sure. But they are good um, brand masts, you know, thick for ocean going. And we will restore them. That's another refit. The rigging, two masts, the booms, the sails are already. They will the sails are The, 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 the Genoa on the front, the furler, we're going to change it to electric because it's easier. We're trying to modify the rigging for this boat that we are we can sail it single-handedly. Because if we are me and him, and maybe something happens to him, or maybe something, or maybe I'm sick, you know, maybe I have a cold, I cannot wake up, you can still go and move. And you make it easy, even if the two of you are, we're sailing, we have a five-day passage, seven-day passage, whatever, three-day passage. You'll make it comfortable. You'll make it easy. You know. You, you have two autopilots, or so one breaks. Well, you you have can a spare on your one. Own. You don't have to wake him Water, up. Water, you know. And you can yeah. If you want to fill the Genoa or change the sails, you can do it on your you own. Have the autopilot. Because we we'll mainly will be you. me and him. We know. We don't know. Yeah. Maybe there is. So if we are me and him, and we want to go somewhere, we don't have to wait for somebody to come to move, to the, move boat. the boat. It's a big we can, boat. We can move it on our own. Yeah.
It's, and this one is lucky and because we've got a big boat cluster as well. So if you want to and, maneuver. And she's super maneuverable. The boat, it's easy to she maneuver. maneuvers very, very good. She has a big radar and um, she turns in a dive. And with the boat thruster makes it super more easy. No, but the good thing is you know everything about it. So yeah, so uh, not, with, make, not everything. Not we everything, have, but we have to learn a lot because we use, the, boat, we use no? the boat only for two weeks. One week to come and we use it a little bit here in Malta, and that's it. We have to pull it up. And now look at the state of the boat. Now we know the boat. We know what we what we have fixed and what the boat has and the defects and the mistakes been done and, and, and we're solving all those problems. But once we go in the water and we have this one ready and the rig ready, then it's a, it's a huge challenge where we're gonna place the winches, what winches we need, what systems we're gonna use for, for reef, for pulling the main up and so, and then once you have everything installed, you need to test and train the system and get used to it, but it's part of the... <laughs> but the fun, once no? uh, everything is ready, there will be small like a party, so yeah, friends can so come. Yeah, so not a small, a lot of parties, because <laughs> it's the main, The main thing the, uh, after here we go in the water, once we finish the rigging and this one, then we can concentrate on the interior, so then, but the boat, and then you can go if you want to go sailing for a day. You can go sailing, you know, because you'll have all the rigging new, all the cockpit ready. It, without interior, you can still go sailing. We need to finish the shell. This we need to fill everything. You know? has to stop yeah. here, you know. Now it's this step. The then you can ready, start now the enjoying yourself because with, with portable toilet, if you want to have a toilet, you go to St. Julian's if you want and spend a weekend there and say, Oh, we'll spend the weekend here. We'll do some work in here, yes. you know. And, and we're not in a big rush. We and have, you're using the boat. You start years. using the boat. We're looking at a three years, um, let's say from now, September. Um, three years, it's a long time. And we still have a lot of things to do. He's finishing his apartment. I'm finishing my apartment. We need to finish a lot of things before we leave as well, not only the boat. Yes. So we're not stressing ourselves. We're stressing a bit ourselves here. Because here is very expensive, it's 700 euro a month for sitting here, for just sitting here. So yeah. once well, that's the way. W once we are in the water, we'll we'll be more relaxed. And know? those 700 euros a month that we're spending here, we can invest them in the boat. Yes. To continue the project. It's good. So because we've been here now since October, uh, July, 2018. Two years and two months. Mm. But so hopefully, hopefully, end of October, we we should get in the water, and even our followers will will have a. Better. We never imagined that we're gonna change so much. We, we never had a, not even a, a clue. We came for a small hole, you know, maybe you know. This we booked we booked the yard for two months. Impressive. <laughs> two <laughs> months. We booked the yard for two months. You remember? Two years. Sixty days we got them. We've been here two years now. No, but now because you have the channel, so you give some updates. People know yes, they can yes. follow, and hopefully one day uh, we wait for that happy message. Now in October, um, the ma the thing will uh, will have a launch video. Definitely, because that's the big day. I think so. Yes. Yeah. And it's be a big day. and then obviously it's the day. in the future for for, for our followers, um, they will obviously uh, follow up on Facebook. It's the life with videos. We're a little bit back at the moment, but the interior we're planning to film all the interior which is for somebody who's building a boat like us or doing a big refit, it's a good help because we're not going to use wood. Mm. We have our own way. People will watch and learn what we're using. And if they want any information, we can give them to, it's not a problem. But we have our own way of building the interior. We're gonna keep it very lightweight as much as we can. Waterproof material. Because we're gonna have be. a lot of systems and equipment on board, so we, we 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 need to balance the situation because we like we like diving. So we're gonna have a dive compressor or the dive cylinders. We're gonna 
you can have a lot of equipment, you know me, weight with, with, with the SUVs yeah. and bicycles, and <laughs> so this is all weight. So we're gonna try to keep very light, um, uh, very strong, because it's important as well. It's gonna be, we're gonna try to have all the interior, it's removable. You can take it off, you bring it back like it is if you want. It will be all in panels, bolded it, you know. Mm. We've, we've been constructing um, uh, the system, designing the system at the moment. And um, it's gonna be in basically, well, no secrets, it's honeycomb. Yeah. It's a plastic honeycomb. And uh, we still haven't decided if we're going for resin, isophthalic resin, which is the best resin you can buy, or we go epoxy. I would like to use epoxy for many, many reasons. Um, but epoxy, then you have that uh, that money gap again, you know? Mm. It's a big difference. But we'll see. Because we took, we took seven tons of wood from the accommodation inside. So we will be replacing those seven tons, but in different ways, you know? Because accommodation will be less than that, but we we'll compensate with the other stuff that we're adding extra, like diving yes. compressors, water makers, and stuff like that. But uh, after all, uh, why sailing? Why, what is so special about sailing? Uh, sailing, uh, it's uh, you can go anywhere for free. It's freedom. You know, it's, it's and the you know. sailing bit of it is when you go out with the boat, you go out with the engine, then you put the sail up and you switch off the engine and you just hear the sea, you know, mm. the waves, you hear nature, you don't hear anything it's, else. It's the best freedom. You it's can like get. when you go diving, you go diving, you jump in the water and you just hear your breath and your bubbles, that's mm. all you hear, it's another world. And with sailing, uh, it's cruising, for what we do, you need to be a millionaire to do, to do it on a motorboat. And you won't enjoy it. And you can't, because a lot of okay, these big yachts and stuff. Because with a motorboat, you're limited with the range of diesel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You cannot cross an with ocean. Sail, you, you, know. you keep the rigging safe. You're unlimited. I mean, there's always wind. You know, have got good sails the, on the on the equator. You don't yeah. find wind. No, but as you say, you're not in rush, so sometimes you wait a little bit. And yeah, we're not. Uh, we, I mean, uh, if other channels, you can. I, we follow a lot of other channels, you know, because we, we, one, we, we follow them because we like to follow them. And secondly, you, you, see, you, you enjoy, learn, you, you learn, doing, you learn what they're doing. Everybody learns from each other. That's the, that's the sailing community. Yes. Sailing community, even when you are sailing, if, if you. Even in Malta, you go to some place, there's other people there, it's like a community, you know. Yeah. And um, you learn always f from other people, other people learn from you, that's why it's good yeah. to have a channel as well, to for people to learn from each other. And the channel, because when, for us, uh, we said, at the end it's also for us. Yes, it's because we said we're doing this thing. It's a dream of a lifetime. Yes. We bought this boat, so why don't we film, film it? Too. It's you know, and try to film. We're not. We're, we're not going to do another project like this. Definitely. Of course, so yeah. it's definitely not. It's a dream. That's no, I think it's very nice story. It's good to share, it's and it's very and inspiring. Yes, maybe. Hopefully for now, some of, for some followers, <laughs> now our videos might not be. You know, be the boat <laughs> stayed, the holes everywhere. <laughs> It's 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 good to have. It's good to have. And it's it, good to uh, share it with other people as well. I you mean, we see. we have some some followers that uh, communicate with us, you know, which they are doing. Some of them are doing um, uh, the refits as well, like Mark AC and as as V Liquid. There um, are many huge projects. Uh, there is um, the, um, uh, uh, some people things. ask you, how did you do this? How did you do this? And then you ask them, how did you do this? Yes. You know. And you're learning as well from each other. And even the channel is for our families and friends because once we go. It's a way to keep in touch. It's, it's a way to, to keep in touch where, where, and see where we are. And even if our followers, friends, families want to come, they know where we are, you know, and 
they say, oh, okay, next next month they'll be in that place. Yes. They call us, drop us a message, and guys. It's uh, part of our dream to have friends can and we, family and uh, homes. You have space for us, we come for a week, some weeks, time, you know, know, and do crossings or whatever. It's good. We're not yeah. going to be alone all all this time, you know. Then it's, it will be even hard for the boat to, to move. and Yes. No, but I think the best part is when the people come on the board with you, yes. they can learn as well. Of course. Yeah, of so course. they do the normal yeah, things. Yeah. There. Every day you, you, learn you learn something new, new every day. day. You know, you learn. Even you, ourselves. You Me and him, we have learn, we learn. have 15 years of experience between us, but yes. we still learn something new every day. And like with this project, we learned a lot how to do the work with the steel, you know, how and to we bend keep the steel. On the go. If I know this will make it like this, yeah, it's a better idea. And you research, you. YouTube is, is a good engine to learn, you know? Yes. A good tool to learn. We learned a lot. And from friends and from... Like a lot of friends uh, tell us you are crazy. It's true. Yes. Because we, with the money we're spending and everything, you could have bought a new boat or almost a new boat. But it's going to be new. I mean, you see the, the bigger picture, so I it's think... It's going to be new, and we saved a 50-year-old younger Travis, because I don't know what would have happened with this one. Probably we go for, for, for scrap, for they scrap, yeah. they scrap it, you know, the steel. So it's and we were lucky nice it was a younger. She no. saved us. So and we're head, saving her. And now yeah. we're going to save her. You know, there's this bond already, yeah. I feel it with the boat, you know. Because even yeah, for younger, uh, for the company itself, it, this is a big project. It's uh, because obviously, th if you look on the internet, you don't find a younger refitted like we did with all this information. Mm -hmm. You know, normally it goes in a yard. This they do refit, but yard they just go in there and they do the refit there. But we like to do this this work and refit boats, you know. Yeah. So uh, we are limited, we are not younger, we would have been already ready in two years, you know, yeah. inside, outside, everything. But they have the tools and... Yeah, but they were we for working full time, oh, we're not working full time on it. We yeah. But soon we will. Soon we will, yes. Soon we're going to start full time. And hopefully from next year we'll be full time, I will be full time on it. So... From, from January... The main January target year. now is to go back in the water, that's the main target. We still have a lot of work to do, but once I see that hole in the back is closed, <coughs> we can close the small one as well, then we know that we're, what we're doing is we're preparing to go. Yeah. And we add a lot of things as well to the boat. That's yeah, why we it's not do. ready. We're not just doing repairs, for example, the we sail locker. the sail locker. We made a new Modify the sail tanks. locker. We, we moved the winch more forward, the windlass. We made um, uh, the sail locker, it's a bulkhead. It's a watertight bulkhead when before it was in the bulkhead. We have also the crash bulkhead in the front, watertight as well, which it wasn't working, now it's working. A new gray water we, we tank. We made a new gray black water tank. Um, we, modified the we tanks. We fixed the water tanks and modified. We changed the, the, the mast. This, the this, base. The base of the mast where the, you see the big mast? Yes. It's resting on this big yeah, pipe like here, I was explaining the support the of the mast, and that was a big job. We found a disaster. We're lucky we didn't lose the rig, because we found the, the bottom of the pipe was cut, and it was the mast was coming down, mm -hmm. and it was pushing the tank down as well, and the more down it goes, thank God we then stopped sailing with it, uh, it's got, the rig's going to come loose, and what's going to happen? The mast's going to go down. So this was another issue, you know, mm. and we managed to do everything without taking the mast off. We, we were trying to get the mast off here, but it was complicated and very expensive. So we got jacks, we jacked the roof and we, we have now um, 40 or 80 that one. Gauge 80 and gauge, 15 millimeter steel. Gauge in the 80 steam pipe and the, before there was only a gauge 20. And we took the opportunity as well we, while we were doing that. We split the freshwater tank. We have a small tank that we're going to use just for water maker. So we'll have drinking water available anytime. You know, it's, 
because we lose the tank just for that, for uh, for drinking water. So that's um, that's our target. Hopefully, end of October we'll have the big day. And yeah, if people are watching and they wanna ask anything, I think there is the section of comments. Yes. So they can probably I will look at the comments later on if anybody left a comment because uh, we. We're doing it off the mobile, so we don't have looking at the comments now, so... Yes, we try to maybe upload the picture after all as well, like yes. a nice uh, souvenir from what we did today. And yeah, I think it's quite fun. But yes. anyway, if you're out there in the water, what was the biggest wave you can see? And like, you ever get scared or...? Well, not really. I mean, with this one, we've seen seven meters from the stand. It was big waves. Is it but scary? I've... It is for some people, but for me it's not because I've seen bigger and um, obviously I was on different boats, bigger boats. And um, if you know the boat and you know the boat is safe, you'll be okay, you know. Yeah. With this one it was a bit different because with this one we just relied on the boat. We know the bo boat is good for bad weather, but we didn't know the boat. Yeah. Now we know the boat. Now I know that I can go out if it's bad weather and I get caught in bad weather, I know it can hold, you know. Yes. With the sea, the most important thing is that you're not hard-headed with the sea. If you have bad weather, you have to heave in, follow the seas and, and let it ride. If you try to beat against it, it will destroy you. Mm. Oh, of course. With okay, nature, so you don't you don't so play tiny, nature, you know? you know? <laughs> in the middle of the ocean. And also, it's responsibility. If you know there's a big storm coming, you don't go out. Some people do that. Some people know that there is a big storm coming, and uh, they don't follow the weather, and they just go out, and then they co get caught on it. But that's their fault, you know. Yeah. But it's lack of experience. You, sometimes you, sometimes get, you get caught in it because you sometimes be you think that this storm with the forecast that if you leave now you'll be able to manage and maybe the, the it comes early or it goes faster and it, fo it catches you yes. but that's a different story you know? but once the project is finished and you're in the water then is it like a lifetime thing you're gonna be on the boat all the time well i think so uh, as long as i'm healthy and we are healthy and nothing happens it's always been my day. I've been on boats all my life. He's been on boats all his life. So I don't. I. I won't change anything. Not for nothing. You know, it's for nobody. I. W I won't change the sea for nobody. Myself. I. I lived on my on the sea all my life, and that's part of me. It's moving house on the sea. It's the same. You know, but you can go. I can go. The... You know, you when you think about it, you have to think about it this way. You imagine you go to a place that uh, it's uninhabited, uncharted. You go there, you wake up in the morning. You can just go on the beach if you want, or go swimming, and nobody's going to tell you, "Oh, you cannot stay here, or you cannot do this, or you cannot do that." You know, you find some places that you cannot go, and you cannot. But most of the places, uh, there's a lot to see. Ten years is not you know? enough. You see nothing. In ten years, <laughs> you see nothing. There is a lot of places to visit. You see a lot, but compared to what there is to see, you have seen nothing. Mm. <laughs> so maybe that's the magic about it. That's the magic about it, because every day, if, if I get fed up here, I can pick up the anchor, put the sail up and go. And it's the lifestyle as well. We like, we like this lifestyle of living on a boat. It's nice, you know, it's our life. When, when we get stuck in a, now Malta is becoming a city, for, for me it's already a city, you know, busy and you can't keep up with the time. And yeah. On a boat this stops, you know. Time stops, so. It's different life. You're not in a rush. I really, I really miss and it. Sometimes in some areas you, you have to follow the weather, like we were saying, with the monsoon seasons and the hurricane seasons. But that's normal. Oh, you just follow, follow up. You you move from one place to another accordingly. Mm. To to what's it's happening. It's not you just gonna go. And you you're gonna you you're still gonna be working. It's a job. It's a full time yeah. job. Eh? You have yeah. to keep the boat running. You have to keep the boat healthy. 
you have to study the, the, the currents, where you're going, you have to study before where you want to go, if you never have been, the, the weather, the, everything, even the air, if there's, you know, some dangerous reefs. And that's and another you know, good charted. thing with the channels of other... So it's a constant, you know, you know? Yes. but it's a, life, a different life. But then, like Daniel said, you arrive in a nice place, you'll visit the area, you'll go on shore, you'll have the tent there, you'll have the SUPs, kayaks, whatever, you know, and... Yeah. And you swim and you diving and lots of uh, lots of diving for sure. And you good fisherman, so no? yes, you can live off the sea. Eating always. fish a lot. No, <laughs> we can, love both of us. You can catch fish. You can. We love fishing as well. So we love fishing. Yeah, because if you like, you get the big one. It lasts for a few days. We yeah, are lucky but in a way, you know? even even because that, if if you want to live off the of the land of of the sea, you know, it's you can live off the sea. It's you catch what you want to eat and that's it. Mm. You don't go and catch like 20 lobsters or 20 uh, crabs. Exactly, or yeah. You catch two lobsters, two crabs, you eat them. Next day, if you want to do the same, you go and do the same. A nice place of pasta. You know, it's, <laughs> we okay. will uh, obviously... You have, you make and you collect. We have water, you collect water. So. We'll make our own bread. Yeah. You live in the... Independently isolated, you know. Yes. You eat what you find wherever you are. And locals, <laughs> you go to locals. A lot of places that you go, you, locals will come with you, with the kayaks. They sell you food or stuff locally, you know. Mm. And, and that's the best place. Long so. Passages, long crossing, like from, for example, Galapagos to Marques, is it's a long one. You spend three, four weeks at sea, mm. and the fresh. After fresh week, products, you know, so we finish products, you know, but you get used to it. But you catch fish, it's fresh, yeah. so you can eat fish almost every day if you manage to catch because you don't always catch, you know. And sometimes you catch a quite a size, sized fish, it will last you a long time if you, if you have if a you big catch fridge, a big two now, fridge, fridge <laughs> system and freezer. Uh, we're uh, modifying the freezers as well in the fridges, we're making them. They were top loaders, we, we like them like a normal one, like the house one. And they, they have more capacity as well. More capacity. We'll uh, have the gully will be electric. It's, um, it's something out of, that rests your mind that you don't have to f go and find gas, you know. Our yes. dream is to go electric. The boat will be fully electric, will have no oil, no diesel, and use electric power. It's a big dream, but the guy, if, even if we go with a diesel engine, we will still have the galley electric and most of the systems, uh, winches and everything electric. Okay. Even the windows is electric, boat thruster is electric already. No hydraulic systems, you know. Yeah, so it's also good, but you have to choose. And no gas on board, or the gas, it's another problem. Sometimes it's hard to find gas wherever you are, you know, or different connections. Or and in Spain, we had to buy a second and regulator. cylinder and so new regulator. Yeah. And, and it's a danger. It's also dangerous yeah. to have gas on board, so you eliminate a danger. You still Even our tenders, we, we're planning. The dream is to go electric, so we don't need yeah. fuel for for the tenders, you know, because that's another thing. Fuel, petrol is is like a bomb. It's worse than gas. You have gas, petrol, diesel on board, you know, and yes. it's safe. It's been used till now. It's a lot of boats have done so. A lot of everybody, done. almost everybody, oh. have. Um, there is few boats that are electric, but, but then there's also when you run out of it, you have to go and look for it. So this, if you manage to to go to have this, that you don't have to go and look for the diesel. Sometimes it's a problem. In some places you are, you end up with a boat coming with jerry cans. You know, you have to go and get find jerry cans and find a petrol station. It depends where you are. There's not always um, big ports and marinas, and you know. Mm. So it will be super more. It's very free sailing boats. It'll give you a lot of freedom if we can manage to to not have a diesel engine. And not have the we will be not oil dependent, you know, will be super a different thing, yes. Yes. But it's a big challenge, you know. It's not easy. So um we sh shall we go around a bit 
the ball to what do you think? Yeah, I, I think we'll so. show them a bit what the biggest we'll, jobs. We'll, we'll start from from inside. We'll the boat is in a mess. Next week we're gonna start removing because now we're moving. Um, we have a garage where we have a lot of um, uh, Royal Athenia belongings. So now we're starting to move. We found um, another place which is better for us. It's closer to Daniel and we have more space. Uh, that's why the steep deck, it's all on the side still here, yeah. because we have no place where to put it at the moment. So from next week, we're going to start moving all the things that we don't need on board and clean, like give the boat a good clean. And even the, the, the things that we have in the garage will be moved to the new, new place, yep. which we will show you later on in, in videos. Our, okay. new, our new base. <laughs> it's, it's very nice. Huh? Excited about Yeah, we see Ian for the first time. <laughs> How are we going? We're going from the Yeah, we go way. from here. We yes. start from see inside. Guys, yeah. maybe you see the video we posted when? Two days ago? Two days ago, yes. Yes, I think the reception was very nice. We got the nice comments and appreciation. So let's see now. This is live. So, um, this is what Ian was telling you before. This is the part that we found the last bit of damage. So here was full of cement. We had to clear all the cement because obviously it became sand because of the water. This base that you see is here where, where the shifting is. Yeah. That's a new base for this mizzen that we will modify later on because this is supposed to go all the way in yeah. and sit over there. And modifications in here, we didn't do much except change, we changed the whole transom mm. because there was a lot of damage of the water that came in. And once we did that, we obviously put more strength on it, more beams, and we took the opportunity to have the window in the middle, it will be open. Because over there, from, from that where the welder, welding set is, there's going to be the cabin for Ian, and we'll have an entrance on the side here. So the salon will be <coughs> same size, but it's different because it had a lot of space that was wasted. <coughs> so we'll, we'll still have the salon here, and there will be a cabin there. The chart table and navigation area will be the same place, but it will be modified uh, to our needs. And here we're going to have the freezer, which we had a freezer before, but it was top, top low there. So it was up front of here. So now we're going up until under the window. So we have a big, bigger capacity, which is important to have. And we move here. So the gully, the gully here, all the gully, we had to change the hull from outside. We'll show you later on, because there was a lot of damage from, as you can see, from the water that came up. Yes. From here. No, and but anyway, looks like it's no job. You wouldn't know how to fix it. Yes. You're ready for everything. We're ready for everything. <laughs> These are. This is the diesel tank. And the modifications that we did to this before they had it coming like this to the hull. So when water comes in, it was staying there. That's one of the reasons that this boat had so much damage. Because all this area here that you see, 70 centimeters, all the way, it was changed because of this damage. Yeah. So we eliminated, we eliminated that by modifying the tank tops and fitting them straight <coughs> to the hull. Like yeah. that, when the water comes down, it drops down in the you copper down. This, this here, before the tank was cutting like this, so the water that was coming from the deck mm. was staying in this pocket here. Oh. And that's what caused all the damages on, the, on this area where we changed. When we went higher, you know, so a yeah. good Like this is all changed here, the top here. This one, or and this part as well. Then we, because we, we did the change. This is the base of the music of the main mast, 
This is the modification we did. It goes down with. Uh, you can see it on some of our videos if anybody is interested to, to see about it. And this tank here, we're going to use it for the water maker. Yeah, because this is a big water tank here, 3000 meters. Yep. And we took a section of it, we made another bucket, we closed it. So we're going to use this for fresh water, for washing machine, for toilet, shower. And we, we left um, a part of it that's going to be just for drinking water. So even if we have one contaminated or we try to never contaminate that one, that will never see hopefully um, water from shore supply. Mm. That will be only supplied with water maker product, the small water tank in the front. And this is the grey water tank. This wasn't here before. We've built this because the only grey water tank that we had before was in the engine room. And it's not a small one, but we would like to keep the toilet in one tank, so it's easier, you don't have, and this one is much easier to clean than the one in the engine room because it's under the gearbox, so if you've got any blockages, you've got a lot of problems. That's going to take only, um, that's going to be the This only will only water. be grey water for the tank, for black. Black and grey, black yeah. and grey that one, but the engine room one, would be only grey water. Grey and everything. We'll the difference grey. between black and grey water, black water is you use toilet sewage. You use sewage. It. And the grey water is just from showers and the sinks and washing stuff machine. Like washing machine. And this is the sail locker. That before we had this area from here, all the way in there, it wasn't accessible. It was closed with wood. Mm. wasn't watertight so all this area was waste so what we did we did a bulkhead here behind the bow thruster and we opened the new hatch yep. so this one will be watertight mm -hmm. so it's safer because we're splitting the boat so if for example you have a damage here the water is coming it cannot come this way because there will be a watertight bulkhead here yep and you will have access to it from there that's why we had to move the windlass the windlass was where the hatch is now so we had to move it forward so we could access for a hatch and we'll have we'll have two chain lockers now instead of one because we'll have two chain two anchors and um, so we have we had to modify that area as well pretty much that's um, the transducer box there. Yeah, this transducer box. This is where the echo sounder, the depth sounder, whatever people call it, because many people. And the valves, the valves were built that was a straight pipe to the hull, but we changed the system. That's the proper way that on a steel boat, especially, that have to be. That's um, so you take the there's a flange there behind the box here. So the valve, the valve will connect to this one, and this one will bolt itself in, mm. and with the gasket. Before it was just a pipe, so if you hit it or something, you break the pipe, you lose. Like this, it's more safer, because you, you've got a flange to flange. It's like on the ship, you know, but yeah. the time is safe. And the, the transducer box is the same. We had an experience before on, on the San Marco, a boat that we were um, trying to repair as well one, day, one time and it hit the echo sounder, it broke it off and water started coming in and the boat sank. Mm. So with that, with that system you don't have this problem because that system it's sealed. So if you lose the echo sounder or damage it, you're still safe. So that's it. Yes. Easier to change it. Yeah. And easier to change it because you don't need to go up in the water. Um, we go outside. We can go outside, but I don't know. Maybe for work today we. we... I think I uh, said enough for today. <laughs> yes. We won't tie with you more but I think you see pretty much yes. a lot today I hope everybody appreciate and yeah leave some I comments guys I hope everybody guys. is happy and we thank you again 
for following us and for subscribing to the channel. And more and videos are coming. More videos are coming. We're, we're a bit back behind, but now we have Kamil here who's helping us with the videos, which is great. And um, <laughs> hopefully we'll, we'll give you more videos soon. Yes. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. See you. See you soon. I'll do this stuff.